Welcome to the Visual Effects Notes podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by F-Track. F-Track is an Academy Award-winning company specialized in project management, production tracking, and the creation of media review platforms for the creative industry. F-Track has recently released two new versions of its media review software. Check out F-Track Review for the new interface and even more accessible reviews. You can also try CineSync 5, the brand new version of CineSync, built from the ground up for the most secure, high-quality review sessions out there. You can try both products for free via the link on the description below. And now on to the show. Hi everyone, welcome to the latest episode of VFX Notes. I'm Ian Fales from Befores and Afters, and as always, I'm joined by Hugo Guerra from Hugo's Desk. Hi Hugo. Hi Ian, how are you doing? We're back. We're back down under, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> We're back. Oh, down under before we say upside down. I like that. Oh, that's a better joke. That's a better joke. Yes, that's right. We're going into Stranger Things 3. Yeah. This is actually the third in our series. I hope you've all listened to our takes on Stranger Things 1 and Stranger Things 2. Hugo, they were fun episodes. This is going to be even more fun, isn't it? Yeah. Like, I, I feel like, you know, I've watched all the shows at the time when they came out, but now watching them again, like, I feel like, wow, this is uh, an exponential, you know, one of those exponential curves. <laughs> <laughs> like the amount of shots and the amount of facilities and the amount of visual effects or or every show is like tenfold. <laughs> like it's just insane. That's right. <laughs> um, before we jump into the episode, we always want to say thank you to our sponsors and also to our Patreon supporters. If you're a Patreon supporter, one really cool thing is that you get the episode early and ad free. If you're watching this on YouTube, please um, leave a comment and also please subscribe to the channel on Hugo's Desk. If you're listening on a podcast network, please also subscribe um, either on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or Google Podcasts or any network where this pops up. We would really appreciate that. Always keen for you to leave a comment, good or bad, um, <laughs> but please like and subscribe us. It really helps get the word out and um, basically is just a, a great way for us to also connect with you, which we love doing. And if you look at the YouTube site, I, I sort of love jumping on there, Hugo, to see you responding and talking to people. <laughs> I don't do it enough. I sort of promise I will do it more. Yeah. No, I, I do try. I do try to respond to everyone that posts on my channel. Obviously, it's becoming harder and harder as I have more and more comments, but I'm trying still to answer everyone. So if you do have a query, like just leave it there. I will eventually get to it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Well, on to Stranger Things 3. I think I might have mentioned this in one of our previous Stranger Things episodes. Stranger Things 3, to me, Hugo, felt like all guns blazing <laughs> yeah. with the production. And of course, in particular, visual effects. But for me, it's my favorite season, actually, of the series, having just finished watching Stranger Things 4. Uh, what about you, Hugo, as a general overview of, you know, season three? Yeah, it definitely is. I, I, I know what you mean. It's my favorite season as well, especially, I think, I think it's because it's more horror-like, you know, it's a bit like a horror mm -hmm. film. I'm actually quite shocked that they got away with the 15 year uh, rating. Like I'm a bit shocked because some shots are pretty, right. pretty nasty. And in the past, oh they would have been 18 years <laughs> old, you know? So yeah, no, it's definitely my favorite show, my favorite season by far as well. Like you, uh, it has the most iconic shots. It has a lot of production, especially the mall scenes and especially the, 
so colorful that end sequence with the with the with the bruce uh, spider monster and all the confetti and all the the um, you know the, the the fireworks is beautiful i almost mm. feel like this is like an hdr commercial this this tv show like when you watch this in <laughs> hdr yeah. the last the last episode in hdr in 4k is some of the brightest visual effects i've ever seen in my life it almost flashes and lights up the whole room so you know it's definitely the best one but um i have some reservations as well like there are some things that that I, I feel like it's also the one that not copies the most and uses the most references of all of them. Uh, we've discussed briefly about this on the last uh, episode, but I just wanted what, to point what out... What references this time around, Hugo? <laughs> Tell, drop those. Come on. I'm, drop I'm those. Gonna, I'm going to drop just... I, I'm going to do that again. Like People really enjoyed it on the last time. Um, I'm going to do a f less, of course, but the most for me, the most... Uh, 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 important ones were the Terminator dudes, like, you know, like this Russian guy that was chasing them all the time, and he literally looked like a Terminator. Obviously, it turns out to just be Russian. He's not a cyborg or a Terminator. But all the music beats, the way he's running, the way he's running after the car shooting, the way he moves, he just looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's like a really, really b el mm. big element that goes through all the episodes. Of course, then you have the body horror thing, which is a complete homage slice reference slash rip off to the fly from Cronenberg to rabbit brood shivers all of basically like it's a Cronenbergian fest the whole thing you know <laughs> then of course you have the mind flayer latching into people's faces really like really reminds you of the face hugger of alien then you have like the acid holes like on aliens 2 when people are looking down the shafts and you see all the 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 the, the acid going through all the st the the floors as well you have Indiana jones 3 with steve and robin like tied together doing all the banter back to back that's an exact replica of harrison ford and and sean connery doing uh, uh that and then of course the Back to the Future scene, both on the cinema, but also on the walkie-talkie when they're like bantering and talking, Dustin and Mike are talking in the walkie-talkie, which resembles the, the talk with the walkie-talkie with Marty and Doc, and even the Back to the Future music is going on in the background. So there are so many, much more than yeah. this, but the most egregious of all of them for me personally, and this goes on all the seasons, is the 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 this you know when when hell teleports herself into other people to, to watch people and you go into this world of black reflective uh, liquid that is a complete complete copy carbon copy of under the skin uh, from jonathan glazer and and under the skin the funny thing about this and this shows up on all the seasons the funny thing about it is that a lot of people i've seen on twitter saying that Jonathan Glazer copied Stranger Things. It's so funny how we reverse this now because the film is much older than, than the show. So yeah, I, I, I said this on the first episode. I love the show, but I also sometimes don't like the show. I feel the show didn't need to have so many copy moments and so many references. I understand why they did it. I feel sometimes they go too far for me personally. I'm the, I'm the one, like, I'm just saying this from a personal level. I feel do, like sometimes they go too far. Do, do you think if Stranger Things was a movie or a series of movies, they wouldn't get away with these homage, homages? Yeah. You're, that you're, because it's a yeah. TV streaming show that we're kind of like at home watching, having a bit of fun. It's like, it's sort of okay. Yeah, I'm I never sure thought about, about that. that but I've I never thought about that. I, I, I think you're right, man. I think you're actually right. I think, and also because it's Netflix, and you see all the other films on Netflix as well. It's, it, I think you're absolutely yeah. right. You're on, on the money. Well, it's a streaming show. Yeah, yeah, you're right. My view isn't quite as strict as yours, Hugo. I think, <laughs> of course, it's all deliberate, and they're doing it for fun. I don't think they're copying or stealing in any way. To be honest. I'm not sure if I made that clear in the previous episode. <laughs> I think it's all for fun. You yeah. Know? Yeah, I understand and that. It, yeah, I understand and that. And gosh, we're going to get to it for season four. The Freddy Krueger stuff seems yeah. blatant, yeah. but it's for fun and it's to 
to I know to I know. highlight I know. their horror experiences as movie But I, movie I think my rant, my rant, apologies for the rant. Uh, I'm Portuguese, so I'm going to do ranting. Um, <laughs> my, my rant comes from a place not just of, of Stranger Things. I, I have this problem now with modern films and modern TV shows where I really sometimes have a problem with not having original ideas and just being a mishmash sure. of everything that happened before. And I, I, I understand that it's harder to come up with something original. It's much easier to just copy or to do an homage. But uh, we live in strange times because uh, this would not be that easy to do 15 years ago or even 10 years ago or, or at least mm. 20 years ago. If you try to pull this, this, this off 20 years ago, you would not be you would be called out and it wouldn't have worked on the culture at the time. So maybe it's because I'm older. Maybe it's because I'm from a different generation. I, I have a bit of a problem with this. Um, I'm not alone with it because I've talked with other people that have this issue as well. Um, but I know I'm a minority. I know that. I know most people mm. think, you know, this is amazing and this is how it should be. I, I know that. <laughs> oh, well, it's okay. I enjoy seeing the references that you put up in, in the video as well and, <laughs> and seeing the final. It's kind of fun. Um let's let's jump into the visual effects um oh my god one thing that you already <laughs> mentioned hugo was the rating of the show and oh my gosh <laughs> the the goo <laughs> and the rats and the people who when they fall and become goo i mean i loved it but honestly it's horrifying some of the most Let, disgusting let's talk about the rats stuff i've ever seen Come in on. my life <laughs> It's it's <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? It's so good. It's so good. Mm. <laughs> Where do you want to start? Like it's so much. <laughs> well, I guess it's it's actually tied in with references. There's yeah. something about this goo and the rats, which clearly relates to the thing, yeah. right? John yeah. Carpenter's the yeah. thing. Yeah. I think the Duffers bring it up in every single interview about season three. Yeah. Right. So again, it's like they're not yeah. hiding it. But it's the blob as well. Like, remember the blob? The blob. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh horrible gosh. film as well. <laughs> yeah. There, well, there's several yeah. blobs, but yeah, it, it really comes back to that. Yeah. The, the rats, the rats are, are amazing. And and by the way, like, everyone needs to go and see this amazing uh, featurette from Rodeo about the rats uh, with the animator supervisor with uh, Jovan Jardel talking about it. Uh, uh, on a featurette really yeah. good video <laughs> yeah actually for the past couple of years rodeo has done these they usually produce a breakdown and then they've been doing these things called breaking down the breakdown and yeah. i actually quite like that it's often the supervisor talking on a green screen set yeah kind of analyzing the breakdown even more yeah, um yeah. it's really cool and here they here they did it to show their work on the goo rats uh, and more and we'll get yeah. to the more I, I really just wanted to say hugo more from a visual effects point of view to me it's incredibly bold to have so much of this goo as a cg effect in the show you know it's it's actually you know a really difficult effect simulation yeah um it has to look like they really did make some goo yeah <laughs> Um, and they pulled it off, Rodeo, um, under the auspices of VFX supervisor Paul Graf. Yeah. Again, who was also on season two. Um, but just generally, that effect simulation just works so well, I thought, in all of those goo rat shots. Yeah. I, th I think now we are reaching a point. I think a couple of years, like maybe 10 years ago, this wouldn't have been possible, really. It's really the advancements in shaders and lighting that really allows this to happen, to be so real. And there's really some really smart methodology going on here for the method, the way that they've actually uh, approached the making of this, you know, by it's like a three step way, you know, by they, they really explain this really well on the video. But it's really cool to see that they had this kind of placeholder mesh that was a bit of like a little small smile, a small uh, slime monster or something mm -hmm. that would be the placeholder for the animation. Uh, with a really simple rig. And once they would approve that first pass of, of path and and where you would go, then they would start putting in 
and serving that part as an envelope for the rest of the visual effects. So they would then put in, you know, all the other stuff like the pieces of, of bone and the pieces of meat. Plus then to put it all together, this kind of slime pass to assemble everything together. So there's like these three layers at work that are different stages of approval that really are really smart because once you lock in the animation, because it's all driven through animation, once it's locked in, then there's a lot of simulation that goes on and really procedural methods to get all this goo to stick and all this meat and parts of meat to kind of bounce and rotate. All of it kind of becomes almost, I'm not saying automated, but becomes automated driven by that animation. It's really smart. And, and, and then, of course, you know, amazing work on shading and lighting and compositing to really nail the, the lighting because on almost every shot, except the cage shot, almost every shot this goo is on flickering lights and really tough yeah. sources. It's really, really difficult. You yeah. know, it's really nice. Uh, where and they could 4K. as well <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where they could as well, um, during shooting, they had some decent, I think, reference. Yeah. Um, either puppet rats, um, or you know, metal <laughs> chrome balls in place of a rat in the cage, for example. Um, I thought the reference this season was so fantastic. And we'll talk more about beach balls and <laughs> humans wearing chrome helmets. Get ready for that discussion. Um, that was really cool. But the one other reference, Hugo, was something Rodeo did more in kind of testing which i really love <laughs> it's beautiful and that is they actually do a lot of practical sh element shoots themselves which you know many vfx studios do um or they go to libraries um but i mean i'm sure you're going to show this if you can hugo in some of the breakdowns oh i'm showing it but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some of the real <laughs> meaty goo firing element shoots that rodeo did are disgusting and brilliant <laughs> disgusting and brilliant is what i'm gonna say but it it made it, it it i mean i i'm 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 sure they never thought they were gonna get away with it but by being practical but it it really served as the ultimate reference to shoot these plates they look disgusting they look but mm. they give you so much information of how gooey works <laughs> and how much goop and layers of slime and saliva and it's just it's really cool <laughs> <laughs> this we keep saying this on the show we keep saying this on the show all the time like if you can shoot it go and shoot it and if and only when you ran out of ideas of how to shoot it then you should start doing it in cg this is exactly what we, they did here and and it's also you know of course it also becomes a really cool behind the scenes as well. <laughs> but this yeah. this show is is perfect for you, Ian. It's like they made it for you. It's like a heaven of of references and stuffies and stuff like that. Yeah, it's, it's great. <laughs> yeah, I mean they don't shy away from using those references, yeah. which is awesome. And and also it like before even we talk about like. I know the goo is the most impressive part, but there's also a part of the rats that look amazing. The way that their skin is like exploding and kind of boiling yeah, just apart, before. Boiling. It's yeah. just insane, both on the cage, but also even when they go into the warehouse and explode to, to meet Billy. That's also like, like and, and it's really interesting and really difficult because the interior of the rat usually should have been meat and bones, but it's like, it's almost like they pop like a balloon and then the interior is a piece of gooey slime instead of yeah. being the actual muscle system that should have been there. So there has to be a swap between the muscle system, the CG, and then this gooey simulation. It's really cool and it's really smart. Yeah. yeah. And I also think what's smart is that as a viewer watching all the episodes of season three, there's a evolution of the goo of course into the mind flayer monster to a and before that to a what was called the tom bruce monster meaning that the goo of a rat and the goo of a big star court monster is recognizable yeah. and relatable and you know it happened with the evolution of the demogorgon in season two as well yeah, yeah. you know from dad gantuan 
uh, to the big one. And I think that's also obviously deliberate. But you could, as an audience member, you could relate to it and go, oh, it's the, one, it's the same, you know. And, oh, my gosh, they've got the small rat goo looking like the big mind flayer goo. Yeah. And it's something I, I sort of really appreciate going back and watching the breakdowns. Yeah. And, and especially the muscle systems when suddenly in the middle of the goo, you start having one leg or, or one wing just coming out and then just dragging the rest of the goo with that leg. It's it's really really smart because then it just really relates. I mean, by the end of the by the end of the season, there's no goo almost anymore. There's just muscles and meat really. But it yeah. really it must have been so difficult because the amount of stages that this that both concept and lighting and rendering and rigging and compositing had to go through because you know, normally on a show you have one creature and it looks the same throughout the whole film. But this creature is like an evolving Frankenstein, the thing going on. And it yeah. just keeps changing and, and not only changing the look and the shape, but the rigs would have to be constantly changed as well. Mm. Must have been a rigging nightmare <laughs> to try to rig <laughs> this thing. <laughs> yeah. What did you think about the moments when the humans are going into the warehouse and... <sighs> And falling in one shot, like in no cutaways sometimes, falling into a pile of goo. Like their faces are decomposing, I suppose, becoming gooified. <laughs> and then they fall onto the ground. I thought those were brilliant. And of course, you know, they're a, a mix of live action actors um, uh, machimated to a CG version of the actor. Yeah. And then with with the simulations on top. But I just thought because they're often done as a one shot yeah. without any cutaways, it was even more successful. Yeah, it's it's really yeah, this this happens I think on episode six or five. I think five or six. Uh it's very impressive. Yeah, they have like the dots on their faces of the actor so they can do a full uh body and also face track as well. And it starts to melt and then it, it it's it's also like it's the ultimate version of all these films we've seen from the 80s. You know, we've all seen The Fly. We've all seen The Thing. We've all seen mm. The Blob. All these films that couldn't really accomplish much because either it was a really bad practical at the time with low budget or it was bad CG. So right now, this is actually the most, the most realistic goo yeah. melting skin I've ever seen in my life. Like, and, and especially when it drops and then... There's this weight of it becoming liquefied. And then you just have the clothing. The clothing kind of stays in place and the goo goes through the clothing. There's so many layers of complexity to see to make this in CG that I I it's 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 really tough. Like <laughs> the R and D on this uh, was extensive and very long and I, it's very impressive. Shout out to to Rodeo and shout, to all of them. Shout out to Rodeo, to Scanline, to Spin FX, Crap Apes, Rise. They all did an amazing job. Like mm. this is a big, big show, and and there's so many vendors on this thing. And I, but I, I think I I believe if I'm not wrong, the main gooey blob stuff was done by Rodeo, wasn't it? Um, they they did the yeah. majority of it. Yeah. Um, the rats, yeah. the yeah. mind flayer, the humans breaking yeah. up yeah. and this Tom Bruce monster and then the the final monster as well. But um, yes, that evolution really worked. I mean, the Hugo, the evolution does continue to this thing that we keep saying is the Tom Bruce monster. <laughs> I love the I name. I think it's also <laughs> called a spider monster. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the thing that Nancy witnesses um, growing in the hospital, right? Or no, where are they? They're somewhere. Um, you know, they're, it's the hospital. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're, it's yeah. the hospital. And then and, 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 and Nancy sees the two blobs merging into one. Yeah. It's just like... No, well, I, and, can't, I can't do it anymore. I can't and, do it anymore. <laughs> oh. And what about that Full when on. Nancy is locked on the room and it goes through the shaft of the door? Oh, my God. It's yeah. so disgusting. Awesome. Oof. And little pizza pieces pieces of the bone get stuck and they get left behind. <laughs> <They're just> like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose Rodeo effectively in its final work there, you know, did some amazing again simulations to make that possible. But if we take a step back, one thing that works so well with that creature 
is the lighting integration. Yeah. And I feel like that's because on set, they just went for it with this lycra cra- clad performer in a red lycra suit, but also a chrome helmet. Yeah. He's called I Ken, mean, by the way. He's called Ken. Right. Ken. Thank you. Yeah. Ken, Ken is doing the show, isn't he? I, I wish he was there the whole time. <laughs> How good is that? I mean, we. it sounds stupid, but of course it meant that the VFX team got awesome, you know, chrome, ref, chrome reflections yeah. and, uh, and performance yeah. um, it's, reference. It, it's really smart because otherwise you would have had to do multiple HDR passes. Obviously doing an HDR, a proper HDR 360 with seven brackets, you spend like at least a minute to do the entire go with an 8 mil camera and mm-hmm. a and a 5D it takes like a, at least a minute and then you would have had to do it several times for the different lighting switch it on and off the lighting it would have taken forever on set you would have really slowed down the shoot this is just so much better obviously it's not as perfect as having a really proper HDR but the fun the the amazing thing is that you have on camera on the aero plate the hdr so that means the hdr yeah. is there for you to have the ultimate reference for anything that you put in there but you know yeah but the extra thing was in this sequence because the creature is tearing up the hospital yeah the effect of that hugo wasn't it that the lights are totally flickering yeah. and going bananas I mean, that happened in other sequences too. But I assume that the chrome ball stuff meant that, well, then they've got the light flickering because they were handling that on set, you know, with um, yeah. some sort of program well, they, light yeah, system. They, they can use it as a perfect reference and then they can, act, mm. they can actually keyframe the lighting of either in CG and comp. I don't know where it was made because yeah. it couldn't be done in both sides. But they could then synchronize it with the flickering of that pass. Now it's it's this is really smart, and I, it's also it's two things, right? It's super smart, super clever, super clever, really works really well, and then it becomes the ultimate behind the scenes as well. It's like it's a perfect yeah. thing. Not they did it in purpose, but you know it's a perfect thing. Yeah, <laughs> I always think that that somewhere deep down, the the producers. The marketing people are loving this because eventually it's going to be used for some great magazine image. And they used it a like lot. That. They used it. I mean, he's they on a red. A lot eventually. They are on a red yeah. spandex suit. The guy is Ken is on a red <laughs> spandex suit. He looks ridiculous, but he managed to look menacing though. It's really funny, isn't it? He's really going for yeah. it on the acting, opening the mouth and it's like ah, like with his hands and <laughs> dropping the stairs. Yeah. It's really funny because most of the action he's did, especially when he drops the staircase on the corridor, they actually left the staircase. So actually his acting became part of the film, which is yeah. really funny to to think to think that. Uh, yeah. No, but th- this is the ultimate behind the scene moment, really. But but this monster man, like this is really clever as well. Like and and. If you allow me, just going through a few of the things that we have here on display, like from a reference point of view, like this is like a combination of several animals in one go, which is really, really uh, unusual. You know, you have like a gorilla arm, a millipede Mm. leg, a spider claw, then you have the glue in the skin. Then you have, of course, all these limbs are individually rigged. So this really complex rig uh, uh, for animation then also like the materials, the skin, because it's made of different people. They have 12 different shaders for the skins. It's insane, like where they have different layers and different parts and, and different tonalities of the skin and transparency of the skin in different parts. Then, of course, you have the webbing and then you have the saliva and the goo. This, this, this is a complex, complex CG scene with multiple layers. I... I I was and also the the way that it merges from full body solid object to a goo that can go through a vent and then back again to a solid object. This is uh, really complex stuff. I I can understand why it won the Visual Effects Society Award. It's it's a 
Absolutely. Some of the best TV visual effects I've ever seen. It's some of the best film visual effects I've ever seen. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. it's uh, it's outstanding. <laughs> Should have won the I Oscar could've... if they, there was an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, big call there from Hugo Garrett. Um, I also thought they set it up so well that it it and because it had different forms, it could come back in different episodes, and you were like, "All right, let's see what's going to happen this time." <laughs> Which you know, sometimes in some TV series. I'm going to say, even if they've got the most amazing creature or or person even, like a character, it's like, oh, well, here we're going to have another sword fight. Oh, here we're going to have the dragon fire its, you know, fire out of its mouth again. I, I'm not referencing any other particular show there or anything like that, <laughs> but I'm just saying they managed to have very distinct, different fight scenes in Stranger Things 3. Yeah always a tricky thing to do in these series of multiple episodes because you're trying to keep it interesting for the audience. Um, and then obviously Hugo that led to this big monster in the mall sequence, uh, star court, yeah. Yeah. uh, with the mind flayer and it's like full form. Right. But now this thing's like 22 feet high <laughs> and it's really got all the limbs it's going to have. Um, and it's crunching a real mall. I mean, Hugo, I, I haven't, I haven't actually gone back and worked this out, but did they shoot? Do you know, like, you know, like a disused mall or do they yeah, build it's a one? As or? I understood, it's a disused mall that they've used. And right. then there's, of course, some external shots are full CG, of course, but some of them are yeah. not like it. It's a mixture of both of set design and also a real mall and also a full CG mall. But, um, this it's funny, they, they set up the mall on on episode two, um, uh, no, sorry, episode three, uh, which is really cool. And, you know, they go shopping and they even go to the gap. Yeah, that's where a fun sequence. It's, it's really cool, that sequence, when Mike is having, like when Elle discovers that Mike is there. It's a really cool story plot and also showcasing the entire mall, celebrating the 80s. It, it really brought me nostalgia because I used to be on the mall a lot, a lot. I used to be a mall rat as well with my friends. There was... There was a huge mall just next to my house in in in, in near Lisbon in Calus, and it was a gigantic mall. We used to go and hang out there all the time. Not as big as this one, of course. This is an American mall. This was a Portuguese mall, but it's really funny how they set it up. They even go to the Gap, where later on the Gap will be very part of the of the mm. sequence, and even this really f funny moment with the mannequin with the same clothing that Elle has that she bought on the Gap on season, on episode three. It's really smart. And <laughs> yeah. this mall gives a new, it really makes the scene incredible because it's filled with neon lights. It's filled with flickering lights. It's filled with signs, with restaurants, with shops. And all of that is contributing lighting into this monster. And it just, it's some of the most beautiful imagery I've seen in HDR 4K I've ever seen. The color, the vibrance, the, the, the selection of color even, the mood of the scene because it's at nighttime. It's, 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 uh, it's really well staged and really well filmed as yeah. well. You know? the, yeah. That neon um, light stuff, which is in some of the signs yeah. from the mall is brilliant. But then there's also... Uh, what is it? A blue, purple, pinky, red yep. feeling yep. to it, which kind of suits the upside down yeah. um, tonalities in the show as well. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, um, I just wanted to quickly mention, of course, the stand in work for the monster, which <laughs> um, I don't think they used any particular stuffies or elongated pieces for the limbs of the monster. Um, maybe some eyeline poles and things like that. But the fun thing they did have, of course, was this beach ball on a pole, <laughs> which was puppeteered by someone from Rodeo um, based on some storyboards and, and I'm assuming some early previews, um, you know, just to give, as we always say, the, the actors some and the filmmakers some eyelines. Uh I think the whole point of the beach ball was that it was because it was going to be held up so high, like that it was just possible to hold it that high. 
Otherwise, whoever's holding that thing would be like dead after <laughs> one hour, you know. So very clever. I don't think the beach ball was any great lighting reference necessarily. I it's mean, like, it's probably got white and dark on it. <laughs> but it's but a great, great behind the scenes pick. That's for sure. Again, it's a great behind the scenes <laughs> pick. Yeah. No, but this. But yeah, this, uh, that, that's just something I wanted to mention. Yeah, this this sequence is really complex because you have like. Let's not even let's ignore the monster for a second. Okay, let's just ignore the monster. Mm. You have an entire destruction of a mall simulation going on when oh, he goes yeah. through the roof. You have sure. cars flying through, full CG cars going around. You have like entire smoke passes and particle systems of the smoke, the debris, the fires. There's so much complexity on top of this big ass monster that goes on yeah. on top of the entire sequence. It's it's and of course the tentacles as well that go around as well. Um, some shots are really really long as well. Um, and then of course for me, the most iconic shot of this entire show really almost, um, and probably going to be the thumbnail of this video I think, which is when Billy is in front of it with all the, te mm. the, tent te the you know the the tentacles coming out of it. That is an iconic shot, like the framing, the wideness of it, the giganteness of it, when he's facing off the 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 like the monster and, and kind of snapping out of it. Billy does it right at the end. It's uh, it's really cool and also a great connection to season four. You know, obviously, if people haven't seen season four, uh, this might be a little spoiler, so maybe you know skip ahead like twenty seconds or something. But it's funny that Billy himself talks well exactly the same sentence that Vecna says, you know, don't worry, mm. it will be all over soon, just stand really still. He says exactly the same thing. So already that is already a connection to that Vecna was involved. It's it's really clever and it really connects well. I Now that I watched that again, I didn't even realize that at the time. Mm. Uh, you know, it's, it's really cool. <laughs> it, I, I agree that it's an iconic shot, but... And Stranger Things is full of iconic shots. I know. <laughs> but there's a big surprise in this sequence, isn't there, Hugo? Which is the fireworks. Yeah, yeah, you're right. A great method to distract the thing and try and be a bit of a weapon against it. But, like, what a visionary part of whoever came up with that writing or production yeah. design or yeah. art direction or visual effects. Because you you kind of like if you just stumbled upon this sequence <laughs> and you didn't know anything about stranger things you're like what the hell the fireworks and a monster and all the lighting that we've already talked about i honestly thought the fireworks was one of the most visually successful kind of and also story driven part of this whole series hugo did do you sort of agree on yeah on the fireworks I, side of it i agree uh, it's like you said on the beginning of our of our podcast like this this is something this is like really beautiful like when i when i was watching this the first time for the first time ever when i didn't even know anything about it i i i i, I kind of like rewind like i went back and watched a bit again you know <laughs> i couldn't believe my eyes when i was seeing this and then when we saw the breakdowns later on uh, on the visual effects society the first moment i saw it was on the visual effects society judging panel and then we saw it released to the world i'm so glad that it was released let, shout out to Netflix. They're so good at this. They they usually launch and allow so much breakdowns and so yes. much behind the scenes Love to be it. out, which is really testament. And I wish other studios would do that. Uh, but but yeah, th this this is a really inspired moment, and it's beautiful. It's an HDR commercial. <laughs> you remember uh -huh. that that old commercial from Sony with all the colored balls? This was an old commercial the mill used to do yeah. with all, all the, the balls and, and the painting exploding. It's like yeah. that, you know, it's like like uh, you could have packaged that as an HDR, like <laughs> announcing the latest HDR TV from Sony. <laughs> it's like I've never seen anything like that. The dynamic range on those shots, which was really difficult, by the way. They Bummer. I'm going to say I think I love this sequence, but also the other creature ones that we've already talked about so much because it's it's it feels like it really was shot at a mall yeah. now i'm comparing that a little bit to some of the more fantastical sequences in the series which are either set in the upside down or they're in a cave or in a really like um 
filled with smoke atmospheric environment there's something very real here it almost feels like a jurassic park like shot to me yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. which is what i love about jurassic and um not i actually love the upside down sequences in season four um, but they always feel a bit art directed and manipulated because frankly, the characters are in just in partial sets or against blue screen or yeah, green yeah. screen. Yeah, yeah. This isn't the case in total here. And there was just something a bit more realistic about it. I don't mean more realistic CG yeah, yeah. or any of that nonsense. I mean, it just feels like they were really <laughs> facing up against this monster and very successful. Yeah, well, it's it's the so. difference even for... It's the difference of framing, really, that it makes it because because they are there, because they're there on the actual mall, they can frame up exactly yeah. like it should be framed yeah. up. I always find that when I'm on shoots and whenever I talk with people that are on shoots, like it's always a huge difficulty when you just have a blue screen or a green screen of exactly where to frame it and it's exactly where are we looking and it's it's tough it's really hard and i'm i'm shout out for them to do this i i feel like this wouldn't have been achieved in green screen as well as effective as it was also it wouldn't have been achieved well on a volume as well it was they wouldn't have had a volume big enough for something like this so right. uh so yeah it's 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 again keep saying this on the show practical and visual effects when they combine together they make the best stuff and this is another example of that an example of that when you merge both when you merge all these departments together that's when you get you strike gold you know that's the whole point awesome awesome work by everyone there especially rodeo yeah hugo there's another big visual effects sequence in the show um <laughs> so that we more. really <laughs> want to talk about <laughs> And that's the Russian machine stuff, yeah. um, especially with Hopper. Uh, basically, that was mainly tackled by Scanline. Yeah. And um, I really like these sequences that involve the machine. I, I had the feeling watching it, uh, in the, you know, with the first time when I saw it through, before I'd seen any of the visual effects work, I'm going to admit I had the feeling like they had something there on set and that they were going to work out the design later. Now, I don't ima- I don't assume they need to build a complex machine and make it work on set and all that sort of thing. But it was just one of those things where I knew they were like, we need to shoot this sequence. We're not going to put in a full working prop and, you know, we're still sort of working out the mechanics of it. When they did do that and the final VFX works there and this thing's exploding and there's lightning bolts and all that sort of thing, awesome. But there was just something about it where it felt a little bit more over-designed than maybe some of the other stuff in the show. What did you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Like, you, you can see it You can see it on the, the behind the scenes where you see that they had, like, these uh, all these sticks hanging out and all these balls yeah, and spheres, lights, lights yeah. and also, like, this, the, the spheres. It's really funny. They even have, like, the, the tubes, the, the, the light tubes to, of course, do the interaction, especially when, when Hopper is fighting the, the, the Terminator guy. Um, and they even have this <laughs> rotating light going on. Uh, yeah. to do the bounce light, uh, to do the, the, the reflections going on on his face. It's really smart. But, yeah, I have a feeling of that as well. I don't know for sure, but it kind of looks like it kind of showed up later. than it? <laughs> A little bit like, like that. But it's a it's beautiful It's a super signal. complex machine. I, Both, yeah. I am not trying to say they need to build this thing practically. No, and, of course or not. Or anything like that at all. It just felt, it almost felt a bit more futuristic than what the show is. Yeah. Now, the point is, it's a crazy machine. So that's kind of fits in with the story. But um, that it's, was just something I took away from watching it's it. It's also funny. Uh, well, there's two of them, of course. You see it on the beginning on the Russian uh, uh, lab. And then you see it at the end, the, the, the one, be, the lab be, be below the mall. <laughs> it's so funny yeah, to have Russians, Russians uh, uh, below the mall. But um, um, uh, it's, it's also like that moment, isn't it? Like that the first time we see it and we have this slow motion moment when it explodes on the first episode, 
that's an outstanding moment, isn't it? With all the sparks yeah, going on and that. the melted, melted flesh of them being burned alive. I think that's one of the first sequences that happens right away. And you're like in for a ride when you see that. Uh, and then, if, you know, obviously the show then just gets bigger and bigger after that. But that entire sequence, it's really, really well polished. Even the li even outside the lab, it's so funny to see the breakdowns where they, <clears throat> the Russians come out of the, the tunnel and then they go into an helicopter and they film this on like a rooftop on the middle of somewhere, <laughs> middle yeah. of nowhere. And then they just replaced everything and only left the Russians' troops. And then there's this gigantic landscape of mountains and snow and sky. It's really well done. <laughs> And I, and I suppose that's actually something we we started talking about in this um, episode as well. The visual effects by episode by season three got so much more adventurous. Yeah, I mean they were filling out this world of the the local town, but they were also like, well, we can do these creatures, we can do this complex monster uh, machine. You know, we can we can have these gruesome deaths. I I actually. I actually felt like this is going to sound really weird, Hugo, but I actually felt quite proud of the visual effects teams yeah. on Stranger Things as yeah. things progress each ser series. Yeah, and I don't mean that in a patronizing way at all, but I just sort of thought, oh wow, things are really developing, and and um, they showed it here, it's including with the machine stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, it it really evolved. Like man, when we look back at episode one that we recorded, there's. It's so much small, the scale. We were talking about yeah. like one or two shots of a Demogorgon and a couple of blue screens here, a couple of blue screens there. This is now like full CG environment seamlessly merged into the sequence, even on the Russian lab where they have big chunks of the lab. And then, of course, a huge extension of the lab on the tunnels, on the lab with the green acid. There's there's a lot of a lot of really cool effects there, and even invisible stuff. Like there's quite a few cool shots of Billy's glasses and Scott's oh, the yeah. teacher glasses, where you see the reflection of all of them on the glass, but you don't see the crew. It's it's really cool. A little nods and little small VFX, which these kind of effects, even just the glasses, would have been probably one big shot at the season one. <laughs> so it's Absolutely. it's just it's just another shot that just in the middle. There's like three. I don't have the the count, but just rodeo itself, just rodeo, did 362 shots. It's insane. 318 assets and 58 sequences. They have this on their website. There's 21,000 frames rendered. I that's just rodeo. <laughs> yeah. It's it. Wow. This they, we're talking about probably thousand shots on this project. If you add up scan line, spin, craft tapes, and rodeo, uh, and rise all together, it's probably a thousand shots. I, I, yeah. I, I. It, it's it, they really ramped up. I, I. I don't even know if season four is that big. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. I, I mean, we don't know yet. We haven't really seen enough uh, of of it uh, of breakdowns and everything but probably is sure. probably going to be even bigger <laughs> well you know there's a lot of guitar playing while those bats are driving around all oh, spoiler there oh my oh, god dear. yes <laughs> do you know do you know i yes if you don't want to know go away but it's all over twitter already funny thing is that he's playing a song that was released in march and the show is set in march uh I so know. How, Hugo, how, how does he, he know the quickly. song? How he oh, learned it quickly? Come on, come, come on. on, come on! He's that good? Okay. There were people on Twitter saying that he's actually part uh, of Metallica. He's actually part. <laughs> of the band. We have to have this debate next show, with Hugo. <laughs> next show. All right. I know how Look. you love that show. That's it. Yes, I know. I know how you love it. <laughs> Is this oh. VFX notes or Hugo's history of music notes? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it really worked, really, because I've I've listened to the song quite a few times since the show was on. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> yeah. they got they yeah. got they got my dollars now from Metallica the Metallica gets your um, <laughs> streaming <laughs> revenue. All right, we should wrap up this uh, season three uh, episode. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. And um, apologies, apologies was... to all the other facilities and all the other effects that we did not talk about. There's mm. so much mm. here so on many. display that we didn't have to. Maybe check out the sh the, the 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 
the description on this video because I usually leave all the links for all the breakdowns on the video. So yes. you can go and check deeper and more stuff. And of course, Ian always has links to his articles as well. He has a lot of articles about this on before and after. So yeah, yeah go in. It was, a, it was a great time in 2019 to cover the work and there's, there's lots of fun stuff on befores and afters, which is cool. So Hugo, really fun chatting about this season. I just want to say before we go thank you again to our sponsors our patreon supporters and to anyone who likes and subscribes this on youtube but also on a podcast network we really appreciate your support don't we hugo yes we do thank you so much for for watching and thank you so much for all the amazing support that everyone gives us all the lovely messages and everything awesome we'll see you in the upside down for season four <laughs> bye bye